right, well, if you have your Bibles, let's go ahead and open those up. We are in the book of Titus, the book of Titus, this strong man, both physically, spiritually, personality-wise. He was the total opposite of Timothy, and yet God used both of them tremendously. And uh, wherever you're at today, listen, God, I promise, wants to use you. He wants to use you. Uh, we're going to see those qualifications of being used of God. Every one of us, as we started off in our first study in Titus, has been called to the ministry, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. God says he's given you and I the ministry of reconciliation. Paul says that is that God is, was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. You and I are ambassadors for Christ, 2 Corinthians 5.20, right? As though God were pleading through us, be reconciled to God. Today, God wants you to spill the gospel out on others. He wants others to know this great news, how they can go to heaven and be right with God through Jesus Christ. And, and Paul is writing this letter to his true son in the faith. Titus is in the island of Crete, a very tough, hard ground, but the word of God is like a hammer. It breaks the rock in pieces. So we're going to see that today. We're going to pick it up, verse 6. We're up to the qualifications of an elder. We talked how that word elder doesn't necessarily mean older person. It means spiritually older. We need to have a living relationship with the Lord. And listen to this. This is from a book, uh, Lead Like Christ by A.W. Tozer. He says, God does not call the equipped. Rather, in his wisdom, God equips the called. And that's where the power and authority of God flow in the life of the servant. The equipping of God's servant is a wonder that flows from heaven and nothing on earth can hinder it. So good. The callings of God, the blessings of God flow through us to this world and bless the people around us. And we pick it up here in Titus chapter 1, verse 6. If a man is blameless, the husband of one wife, having faithful children, not accused of dissipation or insubordination... Verse 7, for a bishop must be blameless as a steward of God, not self-willed, not quick-tempered, not given to wine, not violent, nor greedy for money. Now, we'll stop there. Here we have the characteristics of a servant of God. We already see it here. An elder, a leader in the church is nothing more than a servant. You know, people are getting confused these days. They're going, well, why can't women be pastors? And why does the Bible say this? And I've answered this question before, and, and I will tell you a few things on this. Number one, it's not an essential doctrine. It's not something that if somebody disagrees on this, you're not going to heaven. Uh, St. Augustine gave us that, that beautiful quote. He says, an essential is unity. There are essentials that we have to agree on in order to go to heaven. And non-essentials, liberty. Meaning, we can agree to disagree. But in all things, charity. Meaning, love. And one thing I'd like to share here is, in, in Calvary... All we're saying is that uh, a woman cannot have the chief role of servant here, you know, the chief burden bearer. Uh, you know, whether folks here understand it or not, you know, my only job isn't just to teach the Bible. Um, I'm called to be a servant, you know. Um, I, like Moses, I can't, it doesn't matter. People can say malicious things. They can spread rumors and gossip. I can't strike the rock. I have to serve them. I'm going to love them. I'm called to be the chief servant. Those men around me, I, I'm not looking for you know, um, Super Bowl contenders or Hall of Famers. We're looking for servants. I'm looking for an essential water boys, right? Men and women that are willing to serve the Lord, clean toilets, uh, men and women that are willing to pray, be patient, wait on God. And here Paul says, this is what we're looking for. A man is blameless, meaning not that he's never sinned. I mean, this would disqualify every one of us, including myself. It's, it's number one, I think it's they understand the justification by faith, right? They understand they're, they're righteous because of the finished work of the cross. But also, you know, there's not things in their life that are open to the public that are, that are disqualifying in nature, that are biblically sin, that are sin, that are sinful, that are bad, that are things we shouldn't be doing. Blameless, the husband of one wife. You know, you can't have many wives, you know, no polygamy. The Book of Mormon is not the Bible, uh, but more specifically is, is devoted to one woman, that cares for one woman, is showing his ability. That's where the training ground is. Paul will say, if you can't be faithful with your home, how can you be faithful with the house of God, right? Having faithful children not accused of dissipation 
or insubordination. And, and that's the training ground, the home. You know, I've had men tell me, oh, I want to be a pastor. And they're, they have a wife and children. And, and I'll say, well, that's your first pastorate right there. Make them the best fed and best loved sheep in the whole world. You know, uh, we're called to the ministry. Uh, if you're a husband, uh, if you're a wife, you're called to the ministry. You have your beautiful children. And if you don't have any children, then minister to the children in the church or pray for the children. Pray for your family's children. It's so important. And that's the training. We don't start with the big and then go towards the small. The biblical model is we're faithful with a little, Luke 16, right? And then as we're faithful with a little, the Bible says God will give us more to be faithful with. So whatever's before you today, use it for God's glory. God said to Moses, Moses, what's in your hand? He said, a staff. And God used that staff, didn't he? He used it, he threw it down, it became a snake. He used that staff, he put it over the Red Sea, it parted. What's in your hand today? You know, is it the ability to serve? Use it for his glory. Is it the ability to show mercy? Is it the ability to share the gospel? Is it the ability to to make music or to do these things, use it, share it with others, bless others with it. That's the ministry of reconciliation we've been called to. So do that today. And Father, bless your people. Lord, may they grow. And Lord, whether they're called to be a pastor or a leader in the church, or Lord, they're gonna just go into this world and preach the gospel and serve you in their home. God, wherever you've placed us, may we be faithful to you, servants of you shining your light, and we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.